All right, DiBiase and Doc, a tag match that you asked for. And of course, the UWF and Ken Mantell and all those other jerks gave it to you. An elimination tag. You two against me and one of my brothers. And I know exactly what your plan is, man. I know what you want to do. You want to beat my up brother, be it Buddy Jack, be it Bam Bam, and you want me by yourself. And then I know what you want to do. You want to kind of repeat history, but except your way. You want to get me in the pile driver, set, take me out on the floor, in the ring, it doesn't matter. And one of you wants to go to the top and relive the moments of glory that we did to both of you. One of you in 1981 and the other one back in May or June. I'm going to tell you something. I don't relish the thought because mama didn't raise no fool. I know exactly what you want to do. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can't always get what you want. And you ain't going to get it this time. All right, see, you just ask for anything you want, and now because everybody loves D and D, Doc and DiBiase, you get whatever you want because the fans are behind you. Just because there's going to be a big two ring battle royal, okay? You ask for a tag match where falls count in either ring. Falls count it means if we start in ring one, we can end it in ring two. And I know that's what you want to do. You want to get rid of one of my brothers. And then both of you want to gang up on me. And you want to relive that moment of glory. The moment that I've lived twice in my life, I'm glad to say. I lived it in 81 with you, DiBiase. And I lived it just a few months ago with you, Dr. Death, by sending you to the hospital. I know you want to pile drive me. But you know, I've got my own moments of glory still in hand. And the falls do count in either ring. And what's going to happen when things don't go your way and you don't get what you want? And we make you go to the hospital again. All right, okay, D and D. DiBiase and Doc, and now everybody's happy. The doctor's back, DiBiase's back, and they're running around talking about DiBiase's girlfriend, Maggie May. Everybody knows what Maggie May is. It's a glove that's loaded, man, and you, this is something that you people complained about for years and years, right? And now it's acceptable. It's sociably acceptable because you want the free birds out of here. Well, I'll tell you, and I'll tell DiBiase, and I'll tell Dr. Death, and I'll tell Ken Mantell, and I'll tell Bill Watts, and I'll tell Grizzly Smith the same line. We're million dollar babies. And we're not really babies. It's just because a million dollar contract is a baby to me. Because we came from Bad Street, we fought our way up to the top of the mountain, and we're looking down at every one of you. And DiBiase and Doc, you're going to go down. All right, DiBiase, see, now you're a big fan favorite. You ask for a match, you get what you want. Sounds like a commercial for a bank loan or something to me. So you wanted a no DQ, huh? You wanted a no DQ where everything that was ever wrote in the Universal Wrestling Federation rule book has been just thrown out the window. Okay, well, well you wanted it. You got it, Jack. But you just think about this. I know what you want to do to me, man. I know you want to bust my head open. I know you'd like to make me look ugly because you're jealous of how many women love P.S. You're the one that started Pussy Sissy when you know that I am pure Liz Sexy. But there ain't nothing sexy going to be about this match. It'll be sadistic. That's what the P.S. will stand for. Purely sadistic because I can bring a belt. I can do anything I want. I can start choking you. They can count, but they can't stop me. They can't stop me from powdering you. Nothing, DiBiase. Nothing.
All right, this is it. The big one. The country whipping match. First time ever. It's real simple to explain. You come in the ring, and you got a belt. I come in the ring, I got a belt. Which we all know that I'm pretty good with. <laughs> little bit handy with one. You notice that I have used one before. Matter of fact, I've used it on you, and you know it, don't you? Because you're the one that started this prissy sissy. I told you, you knew it. The P.S. stand for purely sexy. And it ate at your ego and it ate at your gut. Well, the P.S. in this country whipping is going to stand for purely sadistic. Because I will be sadistic and sick when I take this belt and start strapping you. And the referee doesn't stop me. He doesn't disqualify me and cost me any money. He just has to watch it like the rest of you fans. Then I'm going to take the belt, DiBiase, and I'm going to wrap it around that neck of yours because I know it's still vulnerable for 1981. And I'm going to pull back on it. And once your neck snaps, then I'm going to take the belt buckle. I'm going to bust you and nobody's going to stop me. Who? Oh, you know, everybody's talking about WrestleFest. Friday night, the 26th, the Tulsa State Fairgrounds. A lot of guys are talking about, hey, man, I want to see those broads tangled because they're going to be tearing clothes, man, and I'd like to see some of it if something happens to fall out or something. <laughs> if they were like P.S. Daddy, all they'd have to do is put that P.S. move on either one of them and they'd see them any way they like. But I'm not interested in broads fighting. What I'm interested in is taking care of something that's been bugging me since he came back and jumped me on that podium. Ted DiBiase, country whip, and I'll explain it real simple. You come to the ring and you got a belt. I come to the ring, I got a belt. They ring the bell and we go for it. And I know that you like nothing better to take this belt and whoop welts on my back till the blood comes up. And you'd probably like to take it and choke me and try to ruin my neck, wouldn't you? But your neck is still vulnerable, boy. And I'm going to love slashing you. Then I'm going to take the belt buckle and bust your head and finish you off. You got it Friday night. All right, you know, I think it's a real rip-off. Just because now that you're a fan favorite, you get what the promotion wants. Now that everybody's behind D&D, DiBiase, and Doc, you get what you want. You know, boy, you know in your heart, I don't care how many orange bowls you've been to, I don't care how many football rings you wear on your fingers, or what Barry Switzer says, or what Bill Watts, or your wrestling coach, or all your ex-teammates, or former alumni say, your shoulders did not come up, Bam Bam's did. And that's why he still got that belt. But they said, nope, it was like a tie. We need to have a rematch now. We've got to decide this thing once and for all. What it is to me is a blatant excuse to keep trying to give you a chance to get something that you can't take. He went to the Far East, and he beat everybody, every Jap over there. And he beat you on TV, and he's going to do it again. You got it, punk? You know something, Dr. Death? I can appreciate the fact that you're proud of all your football rings and all your achievements as an amateur. You went to the Orange Bowl. You were an All-American. Gag me with a college preppy punk. See, we never went to college, man. In fact, we never finished high school because we started wrestling at the age of 16 and 17. And we've been through everybody. And at the age of 25 years old, my big brother, Bam Bam, stands in your way of achieving something that you know deep down it's a goal that you can't. All your life you've always been able to. But this is one that you know it. You know it when you look in my eyes and you know it when you're going to walk in that ring and you look at him in his eyes. He is the universal heavyweight champion. He is the number one man in wrestling. You want to be, but you just can't do it. You know, it was in Tulsa when this thing started. When you first wrestled Bam Bam, and Bill Watts stuck his nose in. 
Okay, Bill Watts is out of the picture now. We put you out of the picture for a few months. Then, on television, as everyone's seen, I don't care what they say, his shoulder was up and yours wasn't. Well, he's still the champion. But I don't see no reason for you to get an immediate return just because, oh, you, oh, you. I'm sick of hearing that, man. I'm sick of that chant. And my brother's sick of you breathing down his back. So you bring it all. You bring it all. You go talk to Barry Switzer. You go talk to Bill Watts. You go talk to your mother and your father. Because at the fairgrounds, brother, you are going for the gold. But the gold sometimes burns. Because when you go to touch it, it's too hot to handle. And Bam Bam is too hot to handle. You know, they say sometimes you got to go through a little rain to see a rainbow. Well, there ain't going to be no rainbow for you. And there ain't going to be no gold. All right, now that you're back, you lived through all the adversity, you've been an All-American, been the Orange Bowl, won all the NCAA championships, almost lost your career for messing with the Freebirds. Now you're back and all the fans are behind you, and the promotion gives you anything you want. You want an ODQ match with me? You think I'm a fool? You think I don't know what you want to do? You think I don't know that since they gave you a license to do anything in this match, that you don't want to bust my head wide open and that you don't want the same revenge and feel the same glory I felt when we pile drive you and I heard your neck snap. I know you want to do that to me, Dr. Death. I know you'd love to do it to me. But you know what? No DQ means no nothing. It means they can count if I'm choking you with this belt, with a steel pipe, with anything I want. They can say, Michael, stop. But they can't make me stop because it's no DQ. And no DQ means that I'm going to get you. I know it ain't going to be easy, but everybody knows I got a sick enough mind to figure out how to do it. All right, they're having a big two-ring battle royal. Dangerous as that is, to go to an arena and have that on your mind, the money, a prize, yes, worthy of going for it. Putting your body in that kind of danger zone where everybody is after everybody. But on top of that, just because they had that, and now that you're back and everybody loves Dr. Death and Ted DiBiase, you get any match you want. It's one thing to even give you the rematch. He had you beat. Your shoulder wasn't up before the three count. His was. I don't care they called it a tie. And you're out here claiming it's your belt, it's my belt. It's not your belt. You understand? It's not your belt. Now they say falls count in either ring. Okay? If it goes to this ring, it can count. If you go to ring two, it can count. Let me tell you what you can count on. What you're coming for is the biggest thing in professional wrestling, the universal heavyweight champion. And Barry Switzer and Bill Watts and your former teammates and your alumni at Oklahoma University ain't going to help you get it because you can't walk down Bad Street. You know, just getting out of the shower, I hope you girls don't mind that I ain't got my shirt on. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> in fact, I know you don't because I can see it in your eyes every time I come to Tulsa. And you you men back there, like I said last time, if you don't watch it, I'm going to start stealing your old ladies. And there'll be a whole bunch of them to steal at the fair. A whole bunch of them would love to walk down the midway with P.S., Daddy, because... Not only would they look purely sexy, standing next to the sexiest thing, not only in Tulsa, in the universe, they would be with the man whose brother is fixing to do what he did already two times and got ripped off. I'm talking about Buddy taking that TV title. Now, Terry Taylor, you say, I don't understand when I hit a man and he gets goose pimples because he's enjoying it. No, you don't understand because you're a college prep punk. You never walk down Bad Street. Well, you're going to walk down it this time, and I promise you, Buddy's leaving with that belt one way or the other. I know y'all won't mind. P.S. just got out of the shower and hasn't quite dried off. <laughs> In fact, P.S. hasn't quite 
calm down since what I said would happen, happened. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about Buddy is now the number one contender to Bam Bam. That means if you want to get here, you got to get through this. So we control it. We monopolize it. Ken Mantell told us a few weeks ago, you don't own the UWF. You watch and see when it's all over with if we don't. And Terry Taylor, I'll give it to you, boy. You've been a good champion. You've won a lot of matches, went through a lot of men. Even though you ripped me off, you ripped Buddy off twice. But two strikes was enough. And now the belt is where it belongs, and he's going to put it up against all worthy contenders. Because right now, in my opinion, he's the greatest living television champion there's ever been. Now, number one really meets a number one. Okay, Terry Taylor, I don't agree with how you've ripped Buddy off twice and you ripped me off just a couple weeks ago. But it's all right, I gave you a good little strapping for it. Well, now you're going for the big strap, the big one in professional wrestling, the UWF Heavyweight Championship. And a lot of people say that you darn sure have earned it. They say he's been champion over four months and gone through everybody. Everybody's little cutie pie, little Terry Taylor. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing going to be cute when you walk in the ring against 285 pounds of walking, talking, romping, stomping, graveyard destruction. You understand? He is the master of the universe. And he's going to master you in that ring. Yeah, you're smart. And you think two moves ahead. But you think about these two moves. The pile driver, then the spike. You know, I know y'all don't mind that P.S. just got out of the shower still a little bit wet. Still a little bit excited. Because I got a match with Terry Taylor. Kind of match that I know he don't know nothing about. I know it's a match that he wants revenge for what I did to him on television. And now he says that odds are going to be even. Yeah, they're going to be even, boy. You're going to walk in the ring and you're going to have a belt. And I'm going to walk in the ring, and I'm going to have a belt. <laughs> and everybody knows that P.S. can use a belt pretty darn good, can't he? <laughs> you know it, but you're going to find out that there's other ways to use this thing besides strapping you to welts come up. Yeah, you might put some welts on my back. There might be some blood coming off my back. But do you know how to take a belt and wrap it around somebody's throat and pull it until the wind leaves their body? And then take a belt buckle and drive it through their head till the blood don't stop? Well, I do. And you'll find out. <laughs>